Well, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. We have uh, just did a series of three uh, excerpts on the Lord's Prayer. And the fourth one we did on a prayer David prayed called Psalm 23, where he praised God, and at the same time he praised Him, he praised Him for many things that He did, and He took heed to. And then we turn over in the Bible to uh, Psalm 119. And Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible. Uh, there are, it says here, I have a, a, a classified Bible, a very good Bible. You might ought to uh, think about maybe getting one. I have a Dake series Bible that has all kinds of helps in it and explanations. Matter of fact, behind me right here I have uh, some uh, 30 Bibles and all of those Bibles are written, uh, some of them differently and some of them the same, and, but they all have help notes in them. And I'm a Bible studier, so I look at uh, the pros and cons of what the Scripture says. And God is the one, ultimately, though, that gives the correct meaning. Remember that the Bible was written over a period of uh, 1,600 years by some 40 authors on, a, on two continents and three languages. And so, remember that uh, the Holy Spirit put it, the whole thing together. That there is no possibility today that you or I could uh, take and write a, a poem and somebody else on the other side of the world write a poem and we put the two poems together and that'd be the first and second verse. It just doesn't work that way. Only if the Holy Spirit is on the scene does it work that way. Now, what we see here in uh, Psalm 119 uh, there are 18 secret or, or victory over sin. For victory over sin, you must be able to find the closeness to God that He would be with you continually, which He is with you continually, but he, that you would give Him preeminence in your life continually. Now that's the trick. Giving Him, taking heed to God's Word. Verse 9 says, Take heed to God's Word. Young men, boy, if we had learned when we were young to take heed to God's Word. Now we're old and gray, and we're learning to take heed to God's Word. I should have learned that when I was a young man. It was before me, yet I refused it. And that is the problem with many of us that we refuse when we're young to do what we're told by God. Seeking God's wholeheartedly. Seeking God. Verse 10, it says in 119, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from my commandments, for thy, from thy commandments. From the Lord's commandments, do not wander from his commandments commandments and and we need to not do that you need to turn your Bible put a bookmark in chapter 119 I am uh, proceeding through this Bible that I have right here right now to read every single verse in this Bible underline every single verse and highlight the high points of each verse Hiding God's word in my heart. Verse 11. Verse 11 says, With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. That's hiding the word of God in my heart. That I might not sin against him. Hiding his word in my heart. That I might not sin against him. The fourth thing. Always open to truth. Verse 18. Verse 18 says, Open not mine eyes, that I may behold the wondrous things of thy law. Listen, I want to be open to God. I want to know the wondrous things of God. I want to seek God with all my heart. 
I want to praise God with all my lips. I want to observe His truth with my being, with my whole body. I want to observe His truth. I want to entreat God's favor into my life that I would have the favor of God on my life. I want to keep His commandments. My heart's desire is to keep His commandments. My longing in my life is to call out, to cry out unto God for those mercies that I need in this life. And when I'm backslid, to return from my backsliding to the Father. You said, Brother Peter, you speak on the YouTube all the time. You do things and you do this and you do that and you call yourself a backslider. Yes, I'm coming back today from a backslidden condition, a condition of complacency in some of the things in my spiritual life that, you know, God made my life easy. And when He made it easy, it was easy for me to forget that He was the one that made it easy and begin to think, well, you know, I've done this and I've done that and, and it's got this way. No, I hadn't done anything. God's allowed the positions and the things to come about in my life that it would be work to where I could have a fairly comfortable life, a fairly comfortable life as far as physical being goes. Let's look again back in Psalm, uh, I mean, pro, yeah, Psalm 119 and verse 18. Verse 29. Remove me from a lying tongue. Ooh-wee. Oh, my goodness. Verse 29. I have had this problem. Personally, you are looking at a man that has had many problems. And one of them is the tongue not telling the truth. A lying tongue. He said, Remove me from the way of lying and grant me the law of <laughs> graciously. He said, remove me from this lying tongue. This tongue that would not tell the truth. This tongue that would tell a lie. Remove me from that. And then in 41, receiving salvation. Now, look, on our way in this salvation, we are finding out on our way in this salvation that we're giving up the old man. We're giving up the lion tongue. We're giving up the smoking cigarettes. We're giving up the cursing. We're giving up those things. He said, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. I want to be able to tell the man, the man that reproacheth me, or the man that comes and asks me about something. Am I going to live a life in front of him that he would want what I have? Am I going to uh, abide in the Lord in such a way that he's delivered me from a lying tongue and from deceiving and from the things that the world would deception of the world? Advertising today is deceptional. Advertising. Dad told my wife, I said, I wonder if there's anybody anymore, anywhere in the world that could truly, honestly advertise a product the way the product really is. Some products, they say, this will work on everybody. It won't. It works on some and doesn't work on others. They could get on there and say, this may or may not work for you, but it may be worth a try and sell the product. Instead, no, they lie about it and they say it works on everybody. All right, receiving salvation, which does work on everybody. And it said, hastening to keep the commandments of the Lord. Verse 60 in this chapter of 119. Verse 60 says, to hasten to keep. Right here he said, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Whew. I had to do that today. I had to do that today. I had to get up this morning after four, a little after four and make haste 
to get to do the Lord's commandments. We've got to do that. I looked back at my mother and father-in-law who have gone on uh, from this earth and said, they made haste every morning, 2.30. They got out the door, headed for the backwater or the ocean, headed for the ocean, going down to pull their lobster traps and to catch fish. They had to get up in the morning. They had to hasten to, through the day to get back in at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon and then shock some clams or shell some, some lobsters or shell some uh, crabs uh, to uh, knit a few wops, to patch up a few traps only to get in bed by 5 or 6 o'clock uh, that evening uh, absolutely before 9 o'clock every day be back out on the water again, 2.30, 3 o'clock every morning, back out on the water doing the same thing. Listen, you have got to be stable, a stable able in this Christian life. If you're in a Christian life, you've got to be stable in it. You have got to set some boundaries, and you have got to follow those boundaries. You need a time when you sit down with the Lord. You need a time when you meet with the Lord, and He will meet with you. You need to do these things. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible. And it has some delighting things that it shows us in God's Word. I think it's only fitting that it happens to be 77. Verse 77 says this. This is what it says. Let thy tender mercy come unto me, that I may live for thy law is my delight. The tender mercies of God, that I may live comfortably and happy, and, and in this physical body, that my spiritual life would be so with God, that I would be so comfortable in this physical life, that things would be good. Wow. Delighting in God's word. Meditating. Verse 97 and 99. Verse 97 and 99. Meditating. 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 Hey, I could not sit before you this morning and speak these words. Were I not in communion with the Lord himself? I have to be in communion with the Lord himself. And let's look at verse 97. Is that correct? I'm believing that's what we had wrote down here is verse 97 and 99. 97, let's look at it. In chapter 119 of the Holy Bible, God's Word, and I like using the King James Version, 97 said, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Though thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. <laughs> the commandments are ever with me and the enemies are forever with me. Both are there. He said, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. David had many teachers, but he had more understanding because he did meditate day and night in the Lord's Word. And, and I will refrain from evil, he said in 101. I have refrained my feet from evil, the evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have, he said, already. I have. I'm careful where I walk. I don't get up in the morning and walk down to the house of retribution. I asked a man one time, I said, how can you go eat breakfast in the morning in the house of retribution in this place where these people are telling dirty jokes and, and they're just the devil's people and you go sit and eat dinner and breakfast with them. It's not good. And so therefore we need to be careful that we don't do that. Verse 104 
said it, hating, hating the evil. 104, listen to this. Listen to this, 104. Through thy precepts I get the understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Wow. If we're not careful, we'll have false ways in our spiritual life. And we need to be careful we don't do that. Be not a deceiver. Be not a deceiver. But in all things, recognize the Lord. In all things, seek God. Praise God. Observe God. Entreat God. Keep His commandments. Cry to God. Return to the Lord God of heaven. Return to the Lord God of heaven. My friend, I'll see you next time. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Must go now. Our time has come and gone. Bye-bye.